And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Hi there, I'm National Weather Service meteorologist Peter Chan with your aviation weather outlook here for the state of Alaska. As we go through Friday and on Saturday and looking at conditions, we continue to watch an area of low pressure that's working its way up out of the North Pacific on this Thursday. And it will eventually be passing and crossing up across the Alaska Peninsula up toward the west side of Bristol Bay as we go through Friday into early Saturday, eventually pushing into the southwest interior. This low will have a central pressure down around 965 millibars, rather broad circulation around it. And we have a frontal system that will arc uh, up through the Gulf and then and spread up uh, precipitation along the Gulf Coast, especially uh, as we go through the uh, day on Friday and that precipitation will linger uh, into the day Saturday, and some of that moisture will try to push inland a bit too. But we expect uh, rather widespread IFR conditions uh, from around uh, the eastern Kenai, Prince William Sound, in through the lower Gulf, especially along the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula, eastern Bering, up along uh, the YK Deltas, uh, all the way through uh, St. Lawrence and up through the Bering Strait to just off of the northwest coast to near Utqiagvik. Friday afternoon, still a fair amount of VFR conditions here across the central northern interior, but with that frontal uh, system pushing up along the Gulf Coast, IFR conditions again from the eastern Kenai, Prince William Sound, all the way down through the Panhandle, and then a broad area of IFR conditions as the low center tries to lift further north toward Bristol Bay. That area, Alaska Peninsula through Nunavik Island. And for Saturday morning, we expect that precipitation to try to creep up toward uh, the Alaska range as, as well, where there could be some isolated IFR conditions. And IFR conditions wrangle St. Elias Mountains, McCarthy on down through the intercoastal mountains here of the Panhandle. And then again, especially back here toward the low center areas of the uh, Bristol Bay, Kuskokwim Coast on up, uh, pushing into the lower Yukon Basin, and even potential for some IFR conditions along the east uh, side here of the Brooks Range. For Saturday afternoon, we just find this uh, frontal uh, boundary kind of washes out as a trough with still some areas of precipitation. I expect uh, IFR there across the northern panhandle back toward, uh, say, Valdez and uh, Thompson Pass and then uh, back out along areas of the southwest coast, especially uh, Kuskokwim, lower uh, Yukon Deltas, and uh, on up into the Seward Peninsula through the Bering Strait and some pockets here extending into the western central, especially south slopes there of the Brooks Range. So Anatuvik Pass on Friday should generally see VFR conditions, as will Adigan Pass, a fair amount of uh, clearing expected there across the, uh, uh, the north central interior. And as we drop south and westward, with that moisture coming in, with that area of low pressure and frontal system, IFR conditions, Lake Clark and Merrill may try to improve to MVFR uh, by afternoon. Uh, for rainy pass, look for IFR early becoming MVFR. Windy pass should generally have MVFR conditions, as will the case. Uh, Isabel may have a uh, little VFR conditions there early, giving way to MVFR. And then further east, Mentasta Pass should generally remain VFR on Friday, though. As you fly south of the south entrance and into the Copper River Basin, you will encounter MVFR and then eventually IFR conditions as you get further south. Tanita Pass, MVFR, but just south of there and west of there, we anticipate uh, IFR conditions on Friday. And Portage Pass generally socked in with IFR conditions, especially there and extending out into Prince William Sound. Back to the west, the west entrance area there, MVFR on Friday. And then finally, Chilkoot and White start out early Friday with VFR conditions uh, deteriorating to IFR as we go into the afternoon and into the evening. So looking at uh, the freezing levels, the surface freezing line runs uh, from around the central Aleutians out through the lower Bering Sea across uh, Bristol Bay and then on up along the eastern Kenai, along the Gulf Coast, in through the inner channels of the Panhandle. And with low pressure lifting northward like this, we have a plume of warmer air aloft ahead uh, associated with the frontal system that's going to be lifting northeastward. So we find freezing levels on Friday morning will be uh, rising above four, 6,000 feet to as high as 8,000 feet there along the lower Gulf at the interface there between the Gulf and the North Pacific. And again, that's all associated with the warmer air aloft being uh, pulled in with that frontal system. And as a result, we would expect potential for some considerable uh, 
icing, uh, moderate icing along areas of the Panhandle, Gulf Coast, especially above 4,000 feet. The further south you get, uh, the dome of warmer air is, is higher, so they'd be above 8,000 feet there in the lower Gulf. Back toward where the low center is heading, above 3,000 feet, Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay, and then pocket of some moisture could create some uh, areas of icing up through the middle upper Yukon uh, River. And then looking at the, the jet stream, at 30,000 feet, we have a ridge here with an anti-cyclonically curved jet core here, 130, 40 knots here across British Columbia in through uh, the Panhandle. And then back to the west, uh, we find southerly flow uh, out over the lower southeast portion of the Bering Sea. 9,000 feet, 700 millibars, low center here in the mid-levels. Broad belt of winds 45 to 60 knots uh, just southwest and south of the Gulf. And then at 3,000 feet, we find that low circulation uh, just south of uh, the tip of the Alaska Peninsula, Dutch Harbor, with the strongest belt winds along that front, along and ahead of it, uh, anywhere 50, even 60 knots here, just to the south side and southwest of Kodiak Island, out into the Pacific waters on the uh, Pacific side there of the Alaska Peninsula, also the area around the entrance of Cook Inlet, Kamishak Bay, winds uh, at 45 knots there. And then we also find a belt of uh, winds along the west coast, uh, especially western Norton Sound, up toward Nome, uh, the west side of the Seward Peninsula, as high as 35 to 40 knots, back toward Russia, 60 knots is the circulation around a, a low there. So the greatest threat for turbulence on Friday will be along areas of the Gulf Coast from the Panhandle all the way back uh, through the Western Gulf. And there could be some isolated areas of severe turbulence, especially there, Kennedy entrance there, the entrance of Cook Inlet to around uh, St. Augustine uh, Volcano, and then uh, dropping down back here toward uh, the southwest of Kodiak Island. Uh, this area on the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula surface to 4,000 feet. Also some pockets of turbulence possible up toward the Alaska Range. Uh, and then also broad area extending back out here, some isolated moderate turbulence over uh, Norton Sound, east side of St. Lawrence, on up through the Bering Strait.